Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be discussing how we can utilize the new scaffolding capabilities that .NET 9 has introduced. We're going to be seeing how we can utilize the terminal in order for us to utilize all of these new scaffolding capabilities. We're going to be seeing how we can add a new components to our applications as well. We're going to be seeing how we can actually install it on our machine and take it from there. So let's get started. So what I have here is I have my terminal and what I want to do is I want to start first of all by actually installing the packages that I need. And in order for me to do so, I'm going to add the following. I'm going to put dot .NET to install dash dash global Microsoft dot dot .NET scaffold. I have already installed this, but for you, it might take a bit of time for you to be installed. Usually it takes like a two to three minutes to completely install, but I have already done the installation for this. So once you have done the installation for this, what you need to do is you need to have some kind of a project running. So we're going to try it with two different projects. So first of all, I'm going to create a new web API project. So I'm going to put dot .NET new web API. I'm going to give it a controllers attribute and I'm going to give it a name of sample API. So now that my API has been created, I'm going to navigate to it. And if I check right now, we can see I'm inside the folder where my API exists. Perfect. So how we can get started with this scaffolding. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to type actually before we do this, I'm going to open this in Rider and we can investigate this web API. So as we can see here from this sample API that I created, I have a controller which comes out of the box and I have my program.cs with everything there and my weather forecast class. So now if we go back to my terminal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the new scaffolding capabilities. I'm going to put dot .NET scaffold and now we can see that something is happening. So what's happening here right now is dot .NET is actually investigating and taking, getting all of the libraries, checking all of the different capabilities that I can have inside my project. So we can see here, it's telling me what is that, what type of your application. It's an API, it's a Blazor application, it's MVC, whatever it is. So for now, I'm just going to say it's an API and it's telling me, what do you want to scaffold? Do I want to scaffold a API controller? I want to create an API controller we're using entity framework, or do I utilize a minimal API? I'm going to make it very easy and I'm just going to put an API controller and it's telling me under which project do you want to add this? I'm just going to say it's going to be under the sample API and it's going to tell me what is the name of this. So I'm just going to call it, let's say drivers controller and it's asking me, do I want to read write? I'm going to say yes. And now we can see it's doing the work. And now if I go back here, we can see now my drivers controller has been automatically created for me. And now I can have all of my endpoints for that drivers controllers available for me. So it still needs a bit of work. So as you can see, it actually added it into my root directory. Well, what I want is I wanted to move it to my controllers. And then once I move it to my controllers, I can update my namespace and I can put here, for example, dot controllers. And another item here is you can, if you, if you can tell, you still have the old style of using namespace where I have to have brackets, but that's fine. All of this are easily fixable. So now that I have done this, now we can see within like a couple of lines of code, I was able to get a full controller ready for me to populate it. Like this is a very bare bone skeleton controller that I can utilize. So now if I go back and run my application, now we can see it's running. I'm going to go to this port, uh, to this update to this URL and I'm going to open it in my web browser. And as we can see here, I'm already able to see my driver's controller. And we can see that I have my get, my post, and I can see here I have also get by ID. And I have here also my weather forecast controller. So now we can see that both of these driver endpoints, drivers and weather forecasts are actually available. We can see here that the drivers has a different endpoint, which is completely fine. If we come back here, we can see this is the root for it. And we come back to weather as well. We can add the same root. So both of them will share the same thing. So if I come here and update this root directory, both of them will have the same endpoint. So if I click on apply changes and go back here to my open API spec. Now both of them should have the same thing. So open API API. I think I need to stop it and rerun it. If we want to change complete endpoints. And now let's come back here, try to run it again. And now if I do this API API, and we can now see API has weather forecast. Okay, perfect. So now this was the first part of creating a scaffolding application within our .NET using our terminal. So now let's see what other we can do. So we're going to put .NET 
scaffold again and within this one here it's gonna do the same thing as before it's gonna be discovered in different categories i'm gonna click on api again and i'm gonna click on api controller with action using entity framework so let's see here it's gonna tell me to ask me which project so i'm gonna choose this project and it's gonna try to find model classes and here it's telling me that this is the current classes that it's able to find so it did, what wasn't able to find the model that i want so what I want to do is I'm going to exit this. I'm going to say yes, I want to exit. And I'm going to go back to Visual Studio. What I'm going to do is here inside my application, I'm going to create a new folder called models. And inside this models folder, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class. And this class, I'm going to call it, let's say teams, call it whatever I want. It's going to call it a team. And it's going to be pretty straightforward. It's going to have a good of an ID. And it's going to have a team name. So it's going to be of a string. I'm going to say team. I'm just going to say name actually. And I'm going to put prop string, actually int. I'm going to say world championship. Perfect. So now that I have my model in place, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the .NET scaffold again. It's going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to choose API. I'm going to choose API controller with actions using entity framework. I'm going to choose the same project. And now it's going to do the same thing. And now we can see here I have my team available for me. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to tell me what is going to be your controller name. I'm going to say teams controller and it's going to say do you want me to create a new db context and as you know we have created a brand new web api so we don't really have a db context there so i'm going to say yes and my name for this i'm going to say api db context and now it's going to ask me what type of sql provider do i want i'm going to use sql light and do i want to install any pre-release package i'm going to say no and now we can see it's actually doing all of the work for me it's going to start by installing all of the entity framework tools. It's going to basically start creating my APIs and it's finished already. So now we can see it has created an API DB context for me. It added the controller, it updated the project settings and basically it installed the two packages. So now if we go back here, what we can see here is we can see now my API DB context has been added. We can see here that my program.cs has been updated we're gonna go through this on all details the first item we're gonna check is my cs proj so if i open this up and i go to my cs proj now we can see here that i have my entity framework sql and my entity framework tools has been added automatically for me i did not install them the scaffolding did which is really good these are the packages that are needed in order for me to be able to have entity framework enabled inside my application so that's the first thing then if we go to my API DB context, we can see here now I have a DB context initialization. And as you can see here, it's referring to the team that I have and basically it's initializing it. And then we can see here it's also created a teams controller. And from this teams controller, it basically inherited from the controller base, similar as before. But what it did also, it injected my API DB context through the DI container and it was able to do the constructor initialization for it. And then here, every single item of my CRUD endpoint are actually connected to my database because it relied on the entity framework DB context in order for it to do all of the work. So as we can see here, everything is automatically connected to my database and all of the different actions are implemented. On the other hand, the first one that we have created is basically empty. As we can see here, it doesn't really have any value. The other one has a full implementation of a full CRUD operations. So now what I can do is I can, for example, create a new directory. So I'm going to say add directory. I can call this, for example, data. I can add my API DB context to it so I can reorganize it for a bit. And I'm going to change the namespace perfect and for the teams controller i'm gonna move it to controllers yes and it's gonna be also very simple just to change the namespace so i'm gonna put namespace and now what i need to do is i need to update all of these because i changed the location so i can just do this and lastly for program.cs i'm just gonna update the references and let's see what the scaffolding have added inside my program.cs so what it did here is created my connection string inside my app setting so now we can see here i have my connection string if i come back here now we can actually see it's actually injecting it inside my di container with the api db context and all of this work has been done automatically by running few commands inside my terminal in order for me to have access to all of this and we can see the power of this scaffolding how it's actually going to accelerate the work that i need to do because it's going to remove a lot of the overhead of creating a new project or new components inside my project and basically facilitate this for me
So now that we have created this inside a web API, let's try this very quickly inside an MVC project so we can see its capabilities there. So I'm just gonna create a new folder. Let's clear this up and I'm gonna put .NET new MVC dash name. I'm gonna call it sample MVC, actually sample app. And now we can see it's creating a model view controller and I'm gonna open this in Rider. Okay. So now my application has opened in Rider, and if I open here, we can see I have my WW root because it's an MVC application. I have my home controllers, I have my models, and I have my views already created for me. So now if I run this, let's see the different implementation, and let's go to my web browser, and I'm gonna add it here. We can see here I have a very simple MVC application, perfect. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna put .NET, actually let's navigate to the application itself, and I'm gonna put .NET scaffold. It's gonna do the same thing as before. It's gonna discover, analyze the project, and I'm gonna say this is an MVC application. And we can see here, we can create areas, we can create an MVC controller, MVC with views, etc, etc. So let's start with a simple MVC controller. And this one here is going to tell me what is the controller name. I'm going to say sample controller. I'm get, do you want to read right? I'm going to say yes. And now if we go back to my source code, we can see sample controller has been created similarly before with a view and everything. So now if I move it back to controllers and change my namespace, we can see here that it's a very simple controllers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new class. I'm going to call it driver and it's going to be pretty simple. I'm going to have a GUID, which is going to be an ID and it's going to have a name. Perfect. I'm just going to stop this and I'm going to go back here. I'm gonna put again .NET scaffold and I'm gonna go to MVC. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna do an MVC with views using Entity Framework. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna choose the project. Now it's gonna analyze all of the classes and I'm gonna use the drivers that I just created. And it's gonna tell me what is my controller name. I'm gonna say drivers controller. Yes, same with API, actually app DB context. And I'm gonna use SQLite again. I don't want any pre-release packages. We can see it done everything. It's even added the razor view pages for us. So now if we come back here, we can see that my driver's view has been automatically added. You can see here that my controller is here. I'm gonna move it all the way to controllers again. Yes, and let's fix the errors here. There's a few errors that has been created. We can see here for some reason, it's not able to find the right route. It's called driver movie. So we can see here that there is still some discrepancies and stuff which is not fully working. We did not do anything related movie, but for some reason the scaffolding decided to call that uh, variable movie. And that shows you that they still have some maturity work to do. But for example, I can change this to driver and it will work. Similarly here, another error we can see it still has movie. I can just call the driver and it will work again. And now we can see here uh, that although the scaffolding a utility is very powerful but they still have a long way to go similarly from this small bugs that exist here um, and let's do another checks here so we can also have we have a db contacts and everything that we need so all i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna run this and i'm gonna go to my web browser click on refresh and i'm gonna put forward forward slash drivers and now we can see here it automatically checked my database and checked there is no drivers available for me which is exactly what we need and this means that i need to actually do the migration and etc etc for it to work and the reason i showed you this is to show you that the full pipeline uh, of creating a full cloud operation has automatically done for us through the scaffolding all we need to do is to tweak some items here and there and making sure that the project is organized the way we want so this has been a very quick introduction about the new capabilities of scaffold from the terminal within .NET 9 we can see the different capabilities that we need to, that we can actually achieve with this and the different functionalities that it provides us i hope this video was helpful if you have any questions please make sure you put them in the comments down below if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee if you like access to source code please make sure you are supporting me on patreon or becoming a member of this channel thank you very much for watching and have a great day